everybody. Hello and welcome to this free webinar about a motivational letter. So I hope and I believe that you are all motivated enthusiastic and ready to learn something new about how to write your very best motivational letter because it is going to play an important role in your future career. Uh, first of all, some technical issues. While everybody is still uh, logged into this webinar, I would like you to join one more thing and that is going to be my interactive presentation. So uh, if you are using your laptop, you can do that on the laptop. If you are using uh, your mobile phone, uh, just open another page. But the best version is if you are watching this on your laptop, just take uh, your mobile phone and go to www.menti.com. Use the code 815582 and then you can join my interactive presentation. Uh, I will show you the instructions quickly. Simply you can scan this QR code and then you don't even need to enter the number or just, as I said, simply grab your mobile phone, go to www.menti.com enter the code 815582 and then you will be able to react to my presentation and I already see that some of you are reacting and in the corner you can see a heart if you love it <laughs> I hope you will uh, a cat by which you can express your creativity and a like button and I guess uh, there is no need to explain what does it mean a like button yes so join this presentation by going to one more time I see that people are joining very good very good I really want to see you all the time reacting there is possible to include a dislike button but I don't want to include dislike button in my presentation because simply I don't want you to dislike my presentation okay very good so it gives me a bit of an understanding that you are here because I cannot see you. You are the only ones who can see me. So when I see your reactions, I feel way much better because I see that you are here. So I guess it's about the time to introduce myself quickly. So my name is Grzynet Slikaskine. I am a lecturer at Vilnius University Business School and my subject is Business English. And I was counting how many years I've been working uh, with uh, English language and it's already 12 years. I don't know how did that happen, but I believe that when you really love what you are doing, yes, it's so good to see your reactions. When you really love what you are doing, when you are passionate and motivated about what you are doing, the, times, the time just flies, yes. So I really believe that you are already motivated about something and that's why you want to write a very best motivational letter. So let's begin. This is the content of my presentation. Probably you've already seen that in the description, but quickly I will revise it one more time. So today I will speak about the reasons. Yes, why do you have to write a motivational letter? And there are at least five reasons and I will introduce those. Uh, I will talk about the structure and the structure is pretty important because it has a kind of a strict structure. I will talk about what to include in, in a motivational letter, but more I will emphasize of what not to include. That's why I wrote these three letters in uh, as the capital ones. Yes, what not to do while writing a motivational letter. Then I will talk about how to make it unique. Everybody wants to be unique, yes. And there are some tricks and tips, you know, how to be unique. And I will end with some more tricks and tips how to include motivational letter. Let's move on. And here, actually, I need your help. That, that is the main reason why I asked you to join this presentation through menti.com. So one more time, you have a possibility to join it if you haven't done that already. And there is the question, why do you have to write a motiva motivational letter? I want to see what kind of the audience do we have here. So one more time, join the presentation by going to menti.com, use the code 815582 and you can vote. And I see that the majority of you are voting for the reason that you want to apply to a college or university. Yes, as I said, there are at least five reasons, uh, but these are the main 
Yes. Uh, some of you might want to apply to a nonprofit organization and you also have to write a motivational letter then. Also, you might want to apply as a volunteer in an organization. Also, maybe you want to be a, a, a part of an internship. Yes, you want to apply for an internship in a company. And one more reason, and I see that these are two equal reasons. You want to apply for a job and I wrote that in brackets. You might need to write a cover letter, which is pretty similar to a motivational letter. But just to know a cover letter is something that collaborates with your CV a lot. Yes, with a cover letter, you reveal your best qualities or extra qualities that you haven't included in your CV. So I see that the winners are college university you are thinking about applying there and also you are thinking about applying for a job and I guess that also you have to write motivational letter there or a cover letter but as I said these are very very similar ones okay so let's agree that the winners are university and college and application for a job I will cover all of these step by step okay so the first thing that I've included here uh, and all the, the steps I've included with three uh, tips, three things that I think that are the most important, essential. Yes. First of all, if you're applying to a college or university, you have to have in mind and you have to uh, remember that you want to pursue the specific degree and you are applying to a specific place. That's why I included a logo of Vilnius University. Uh, if you're thinking about Vilnius University or another university, you're thinking about Vilnius, London, Paris, whatever it is, probably you are also thinking about changing the place. Yes, changing the place of your residence. Yeah, so you have to show and be enthusiastic about doing that. And you have to be very specific that you are about to come somewhere else, that you are about to join another uh, organization college, university, whatever it is. So be specific about the place and about the degree that you are applying. Mention it. Why do you want to go there? Why do you want to be the part of that community? Also, another thing is very important. You should collaborate with the program. What does it mean collaborate with the program? Let's say if you want to apply to a program of finance, and you are also mentioning some of your hobbies, which is very welcome in motivational letter to show all types of your personality. So let's say you're applying to a finance to finance program and you mentioned that you play guitar. Yes. Why do you do that? Give the reason, colorate with the program. Let's say even if you have the hard maths, yes, you also own a soul of creation, which makes you a versatile person. And vice versa, uh, if you are applying to some kind of program which requires creativity from you, yes, and let's say you mention one of your hobbies, tennis. So again, give the reason for that, yes, give the reason why you are mentioning this type of sport. So let's say being with a creative mind, you are also good at focusing and concentration and tennis is a proof of that. So always think about the coloration with the program, with the place. Yeah, don't forget that. Another point that I find very important is focus on your intellectual personality. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be personal in the way that it makes you appear non-serious. So you should really focus on your intellectual personality rather than on something humorous or funny and so on and so forth. Yes. So uh, be careful of not to include a lot of your deficit side. Yes, not to concentrate on your deficit. Always focus on your strengths and the reasons why you want to be the right person, the right person for the university, because you are not only going to get some knowledge. Yes, you're not going uh, not only going to learn something new, but you are also going to give something. So be sure that you are mentioning these things what you are going to give, how you are going to uh, be the part of the community. And in this case, how you are going to be the part of college and university. And I see that you are reacting. So really do do this. I really like to see that. OK, let's 
let's move on. And the next thing that I want to talk, I connected these two things, applying to a nonprofit organization or becoming a volunteer because the tips are the same. Basically, the tips are the same for all the reasons, yes, but these are tip especially specific when you are applying to a non-profit uh, non organization or becoming as a volunteer because usually or in the majority of cases you are not going to get any salary from that yes so you have to be very certain that you want to do that and you have to show that so first of all you have to be very certain about the organization what does it mean you have to know what do they do yes uh, how do they do where do they do and so on and so forth show all the knowledge also about uni the university you can show all the knowledge yes but about nonprofit organization it's important to show that because you want to be a part of it without no pay without no refund yes the reasons for volunteering these are also very important to stay yes uh, the, there can be plenty of reasons why do you want to be a volunteer. Maybe you want to do something good for the community. Maybe you want to get some practice for your future career, studies or job. Yes, there might be many, many, many reasons for that. So state those reasons clearly because um, sooner or later, uh, the reader, the one who is going to accept you or not, he knows or she knows that people, they lose this interest in volunteering quite often and quite soon. So they must be certain that you are the right person, that you have enough of enthusiasm in doing this. Uh, one more thing, honesty, and you will be probably surprised why honesty. Of course, you have to be honest and especially here. You have to be honest about your capabilities. What do you know already and what you don't know? I will give a simple example. Let's say you want to become a volunteer in an animal shelter. Yes, and you can say that you know a lot about dogs because you own one, but you don't know a lot about other animals, let's say cats, and you, but you want to learn because you just in general love animals and you want to help. You want to be the part of, of this community which helps animals. And maybe it's about the time to press the cat. So by being honest, by stating what do you know and not what don't you know, but what do you want to learn is this is the honesty. So don't be afraid to say the things you don't know by saying in the way that you want to learn. OK, the next thing, and I saw that this is very important for you. You voted, uh, the majority of you voted that applying for a job is one of the reasons why you want to write a motivational letter. And just a quick reminder that all of you can be the part of this presentation by going to menti.com using the code 815582 and pressing reactions on my slides. So applying for a job. The first thing that I've included that is very important, convincing evidences. What does it mean? Many people while writing um, a motivational letter, they do write uh, about the experience, about the past. What did they do? Yes, and they say and they say a lot about their responsibilities. I was responsible for this. I was responsible for that. I did that. I worked there and so on and so forth. I have I have experience in this field and so on. But you have to say what is now? What kind of person have you become uh, out of all of this experience? Uh, what kind of qualities have you gained? If you had these responsibilities, what kind of person are you now? And you have to state that very clearly because just being responsible and just saying what you did, it's not enough. It's more interesting to know who are you now? Yes. So let's say I will give again a simple example. Let's say that you have experience in volunteering uh, in a library and before doing that, you had a fear of public public speaking. Yes. That happens quite often. And in this library, you had to talk in public quite often. There were some events. You had to introduce some speakers and to participate in some seminars. And you had to speak in front of the public. And you did that for three years, this volunteering program. And eventually, you have no fear or very little fear 
uh, or you, you reduce the fear of speaking in front of the public. So you create like a sentence, yes, by stating your experience in volunteering. You mentioned where in the library, then you mentioned for how long, that means three years, and then you are mentioning what did you do? What have you gained? Yes. So these are the convincing evidences that it's really clear. Um, then the next thing that I've included here, differentiation from the competition. Yes, everybody wants to be different. In the majority of cases, the reader of your motivational letter is going to read more of motivational letters. And you really don't want to be one off some kind of amount of uh, other people. You want to be different. You want to be unique. And that's why you want to be invited somewhere, either in a university, either in some kind of an organization or as a new worker in a team, in a job. Yes. So how to do that? First of all, uh, I will talk that a bit later as well. First of all, do not copy anything yes, from other people, from other motivational letters. Be unique and say everything uniquely. You have an interesting uh, story. You are an interesting person, so don't be afraid to show that. So that's that's pretty important because many people, they try to copy from one motivational letter, a bit from another motivational letter, and then a bit from one more motivational letter, and they think, oh, I did kind of a good job. Never, please, never don't do that, you know, never, never, because a reader is going to read tens and, and hundreds maybe of similar motivation letter. And if you just copy sentences from others, you are not going to be different from the competition. So that's the most important thing. And also uh, differentiation from the competition. One more thing helps uh, knowledge about the place that you are applying enthusiasm about the place that you are applying. I've included that as a third number. So be yourself, show enthusiasm. And by showing enthusiasm, that means that you are not only stating the facts. Yes, this is the fact about me. This is the fact about me. And this is one more fact about me. It's not enough. You have to show that you really want to be a new part of organization or of the company. Yes. So don't be afraid to be enthusiastic at the very beginning, in the middle of your motivation letter and even at the end. And I will talk about that when I'm going to talk about the structure. And here, actually, I will need your help as well talking about this structure. So I hope that you are all here and here I want you to vote one more time. How do you think? How many paragraphs we should include into a motivational letter? And I am giving you these choices. Three paragraphs, four paragraphs, five paragraphs, six paragraphs or seven paragraphs. How do you think? You can vote for more than one answer. Yes, for more than one answer. How many paragraphs you should include in your motivational letter? OK, I see that people are voting, voting. I want to give you a bit of the time. I know that this event is live and you are probably from different countries and the connection sometimes it's not so quick. So I want to see as many as possible. OK, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. So of course, I will emphasize on the variance that I didn't give you. Of course, your motivation letter shouldn't be just one paragraph. This is totally wrong. It shouldn't be two paragraphs. Yes, that's also wrong. It should be divided. It should be visually attractive. And I see that you are still voting, but I can already say that all the variants are correct. So at least you should write three paragraphs, which is minimum. And I will talk later about that. Uh, you can write four paragraphs. You can also write five, par five paragraphs and you can also write seven paragraphs. And I see that only 2% of you are voting for seven paragraphs, but it is also possible. My advice is, of course, not to write more than seven paragraphs. Then it looks a bit strange. And also, 
some people they like to write those bullet points yes bullet points these are okay sometimes it is okay especially uh, you have to think carefully what you want to, um, to mention with these bullet points yes but your cv is already let's say with those bullet points with those very concrete steps yes so your motivational letter shouldn't be just bullet points and the facts it should be your story that's why I really advise to write in paragraphs and I will explain how. So first of all, everybody should remember that a motivational letter is a one page writing. It's a one pager, yes? And definitely you shouldn't write more than one page, yes? So the structure is pretty simple, introduction, body and conclusion. So stick with one page, don't write longer, and if you decide that you are going to write, and I see that majority of you voted for three paragraphs. So introduction, one paragraph, body, one paragraph, and of course, conclusion, one paragraph. If you decide that you are a type of person that you want to divide some particular stories into more paragraphs, so you can write, let's say, uh, two introductory paragraphs, three body paragraphs and two conclusion paragraphs and in total you have seven paragraphs and visually it looks really nice so it depends on you on your uniqueness yes you show your personality for that yes how do you express your thoughts so let's go through all parts first of all introduction what do you have to write in introduction? So, of course, in introduction, you have to write your personal information, but in a way that it grabs the reader's attention. Statistically, it is said that people, they spend 10 seconds at about 10 seconds while reading your CV. And I'm not sure I haven't found the correct statistics. How long do they spend on reading your motivational letter? You should spend a lot of time while writing it, but the reader probably is going to spend not so much. So your very first sentences must be grabbing the attention. One more time, I'm repeating, don't copy from the Internet. Create your own sentence. Think of how can you represent yourself. Mention where you are applying because it must be specific. It, it shouldn't be something general. The reader must understand that you are writing to him or her, to their organi organization or to their company. So mention the company that you are applying, the university that you are applying and mention the reason why you are applying. And one more thing I have included here with the word connections. It's okay to mention the connections. What does it mean? For example, somebody recommended you the place. Somebody told you that, um, I don't know, somebody worked there or somebody studied there, yes? And you can mention how did you get the information about the place that you want to apply to, yes? Either you are mentioning a name and a surname, uh, either you are mentioning the place where you heard about it, let's say in a seminar, in a conference, or even you are mentioning some kind of advertisement that you've seen an advertisement about this company, about this, this university and so on and so forth. All these variants, these are good to include if you have strong connection, yes, strong reason. And let's say if you mention an advertisement, a reader is going to think, oh, our advertisement was successful. People noticed that and that's why they are contacting. So you will get a kind of a plus for that. And also in the very introduction, you, sh you have to show your excitement that you were waiting for this opportunity and finally you can do that. Finally, you are so happy to write a motivational letter and you are so happy to be the part of a new community. So at the very beginning, show your excitement as well. Good, let's continue. The body, yes, the body of your motivational letter is the main part basically this is the part where you kind of sell yourself yes and you have to write a story behind your achievement what does it mean i have already mentioned that yes you have to write some kind of a facts connected with the story and i gave you an example with a library so this how it works yes you are mentioning your achievements 
with a story, but not just random facts. Random facts are already in your CV. Don't repeat your CV, create different sentences, make it fluent, yes? Uh, I've included a map here as a picture. Make it informative as a map, but concrete. Yes, and the next point is which helps you to make it concrete using numbers and metrics. Why is that? Because, as I said, some people, they just scan your motivational letter. Yes, they they read it very quickly. OK, some people they spend more time on, on this. But first of all, what do you do? You scan it. When you scan a motivation letter and you catch some numbers on it, then you can remember the motivation letter better. So what can you express in numbers? Yes, these are eye catching. You know, when you look at the text, you quickly see the numbers. You can express your experience. You can express your achievements maybe by percentages. You can write the level that you have achieved the degree that you have and so on and so forth. So be sure that something you can express in numbers and that there are some numbers in your motivational letter. As I said, these things are eye catching. The next thing that I've included uh, and I called this bullet point overcome challenges. What does it mean? Everybody in all places, especially at work, also at university in volunteering on an organization, you have you will have some problems. Yes, you will face maybe even a lot of problems. So you have to deal with these problems. So in your motivational letter, you can show what kind of problems have you already solved in your life. And these might be uh, different things, yes, um, by mentioning where did you do that, how did you do that, how did you manage and so on and so forth, yes. And I also, as I said, I gave you a good example about volunteering. You've managed to overcome your uh, problem or your fear of public speaking, yes, and you are already a good speaker and so on and so forth. You Maybe you have solved some issues in management or maybe you've already have experience, let's say, in studying somewhere for one year, but you understood that that's not the place. That's why you want to change it, but you managed to finish this one year and so on and so forth. And it's nothing bad about changing the subject, changing the university or changing the program. This is your story, your unique story, and you should mention what kind of challenges have you already overcome in your life. One more thing that I've mentioned here, goals and mission. As I said, it is important to find out about the organization that you are applying to, university, college, job, and so on and so forth. Read as much as possible about it on the internet. Read about their goals and mission, and maybe you can adhere to the same goals and mission yourself. And if you are mentioning that you have similar goals as some kind of organization, they're going to be pleased with that. They will see that you are really similar, that you can really fit here. Yes. And also, if you have some differing goals, don't be afraid to mention. Don't be afraid to talk about your future. What do you expect in your life? Yes. What, what kind of person would you like to become? Mention who you are and what would you like to become as well. That's pretty interesting all the time and every person uh, has different expectations. OK, let's move on. Conclusion. Conclusion, this is something that it helps you to feel, as I've mentioned here in this bullet point, confidence. You should express your confidence in the conclusion. Many people like to finish the motivation letters or any other letters with a lot of hope. I hope, I hope, I hope, and I hope. So don't be so, so hopeful in a motivational letter. Be confident, express your confidence. Not just saying that I hope you will contact me and so on and so forth. Use the word I believe <laughs> and, and any any type of the sentence. I'm not giving you very concrete sentences because, as I said, you have to be unique in writing. But expressing your confidence at the very end, it gives a clue for the reader that you also have strong enthusiasm. 
I've included one more bullet point, which is promise. And promise this is also something valuable. Yes, you can promise that you are going to be a great part of this new community to you and so on and so forth. You can promise many things. You can promise to bring all your energy, all your qualities, qualifications, uh, experience and so on and so forth. Yes, by also mentioning something that it is connected with the organization you are applying. One more thing is appreciation. A person finished reading your motivational letter rewards for him, he or she spent quite a lot of time or maybe some time by doing that. So show respect, show thankfulness and show appreciation at the very end that you are thankful that they did that. Yes. So that's about the conclusion. So you have to be really true, true passionate about what you are writing, yes, and bring all the best on the table. OK, let's move on. This part I really like. And I said that I am going to emphasize on the things of what not to include in motivation letter. And here also I need your help. So this is going to be a bit different voting. You have to put the place in the importance from the very first. The, if you give that the first place, so that means that that is the most important for you not to do. You think that that's the most important not to do. If you give the seventh place, this is a bit less important. OK, I will read them all and you have time to read them all. Don't be in a rush. Take time to vote. So the first thing that I've included here is do not repeat the application form or CV. Yes, do not try to make too many points. Do not force the letter towards humor. Do not be someone else. Do not copy from other letters. Do not write at the last minute and do not use blur words. OK, so I see that you are voting. As I said, take time to think what is the most important not to do. It's really interesting to see. Those who haven't joined the voting, you can still do that. Go to menti.com, use the code 815582. By the way, I will share this presentation after our seminar. You will be able to see the slides with all the results. And that's going to be interesting. OK, I see that the winner so far is do not be someone else. OK, OK, while you are voting, I will go step by step uh, through all of this. Uh, so the first thing that I would like to discuss is do not repeat what is already written in your uh, in your CV. Yes, because usually you have to attach both motivational letter and CV or your resume. Yes, so make sure that these are two different things. Yes, you just don't write the same facts in the same sentences with the same constructions in your motivation letter. Make it different. Use the opportunity that you have. Uh, use this opportunity that you can write about yourself more in different sentences, in different constructions. Give extra information, yes? So make sure that your CV and your motivation letter, they colorate, but they are not about the same, totally about the same. So let's say if you have some kind of a uh, certificate in, in the motivational letter, you just mentioned that you have the certificate. Think what have you gained from this certificate? What knowledge, what experience and so on and so forth. Yes, so give extra information. The next, next thing that I've included uh, is do not try to make too many points. People get excited about writing a motivational letter. They want to write so many things. They want to show many of important assets and sometimes they are a little bit uh, how to say they try uh, they try too much yes they as I said one page no more so never write two pages yes so don't expand on one particular thing try to be versatile try to write many different information but not just concentrate on one thing yes still be consistent consistency is really important in motivation letter it's not just a it's not such a long writing it's not a novel yes 
OK, do not force the, the letter towards you more. I see that you are not really voting for that. That's the seventh place. Maybe it's not the most important. I agree. Probably I would give that seventh place as well. And what does it mean? I've already mentioned that when I was talking about applying to university or a college. Yes, sometimes people want to show their passion and creativity and things like that, and they joke a bit. It's good to joke if you are applying for something which requires humor, yes? But when you are applying to university, let's say finance or international business or so on and so forth, maybe humor to show your humorous part, it's not the place, yes? Because, why is that? Because uh, something what is funny for you might not be really funny for other person. We have different sense of humor, yes? So maybe motivation letter is not the place to joke, yes? Be serious, but be positive. OK, another thing, and I see that that is number one for you. Do not be someone else. Yes, I agree. That's really important, although I have another favorite and I will say which one. So do not be someone else. So always bring forward your own voice. Yes, you are unique, as I said. Show your uniqueness. Don't be afraid. Don't copy uh, anything what what you've heard or what you've seen and so on and so forth. Make something interesting, write something interesting about yourself, yes? And you, I'm sure that you have unique qualities. Think about those and think how to present. These are easy for the reader because you know why this one is also so important? Because the reader is going to read so many other motivational letters. And when you are really honestly writing about yourself, that's going to be different the reader quickly understands. Are you lying? Are you honest? Or are you just copying someone? And I would say that the most important for me, and you've uh, also voted for it quite a lot, that is in the second place, do not copy from other letters. Really don't do that. Read as many as possible, not too many, but as many as possible motivational letters. There is even a saying that example is the best definition. Read mo motivational letters, but don't copy. Don't copy sentences. You know that many people do that. Many people, they still do that. They copy sentences, they delete information that it is not about them and they include their information. Don't do that. Read, forget a bit and write your own. Use your own sentence construction, use your own vocabulary, your own adjectives and so on and so forth. And again, for the reader, it's really easy to notice. If you are the one who is copying, another person is going to be the one who is copying. Again, plagiarism, it's so easy to, to recognize that. There are some certain programs you can just simply uh, paste your motivation letter in that program and you will see how many percentages are copied from the internet. So you don't really want to make this expression of that you are cheating, basically. So, this for me is the most important. Another uh, thing that I haven't talked ab about is do not write your motivational letter at the last minute. And I see that um, it's in the fourth place for you. As I said, the reader is going to spend not so much time, but you should spend a lot of time on it. And one day or maybe even two days, that's not enough. Take time to think about the things that you want to mention in your motivational letter, reread it another day, think again, and then reread. Dedicate enough time for that. CV and motivational letter, these are so important in your future career, so you shouldn't do that at the very last minute or in a couple of, of hours. That's basically impossible to write a good motivational letter in a couple of hours. So start in advance, be clear about your goals and then reread it and make it as perfect as possible. And one more thing, which I see that it is in the fifth place, do not use blur words. And maybe you are asking, what are these blur words? And I included this because recently I had another seminar about how to give a great feedback. And in this seminar, a speaker was talking about those blur words. And I thought that that's such a good idea that you shouldn't use those. Blur words, these are the words that have different meaning 
for different people. Let's say a word reliable. Reliable, that's a good word. Everybody wants to be reliable and everybody include that word in a motivation letter. I am reliable, yes? But what does it mean? A reliable person for me, it means that, for example, he or she is never late. A reliable person for you might be the one who does, let's say, who doesn't reveal the secrets. That's a reliable person, yeah? A reliable person for another one can be the one who always does the tasks the ones that are dedicated for that person. So you see, we already have three definitions of a reliable person. So when you mention that you are reliable, explain why, yes? Give data points. Data points are the one that explain something, let's say an adjective in this case, with specific events and times. Let's say I am a reliable person because I was never late to any important meeting or my job and I always do the tasks at, at the right time and I'm very quick in responding emails because I just like it. Something like that. I got, I think you understood me. Good. Thanks for your voting. Let's move on. One more thing that I want to, to think of, uh, to talk about, how to make it unique. Yes, and I will mention a few things here. Uniqueness. Everybody wants to be unique. Yes, and here all these three bullet points, they basically talk about the same thing, which is design, visualization and appropriation for a quick scan. Of course, your, uh, your motivation letter shouldn't be uh, fulfilled with pictures or diagrams and so on and so forth. This is not the place for that thing, but you should think about small details, maybe using a template, especially if you are attaching your CV, your CV and your motivational letter should be the same. What does it mean? With the same design, with the same font, with the same construction and with the same, uh, let's say, symbols, if you are using those. A little line aside, uh, some small, small picture or maybe even light background can help you. Because we live in the society, we live in the times when we are so used to this social media, we see the pictures and videos, photos and things like that. We want to get information so quickly. So your motivational letter must also be appealing to the eye. It must be attractive and it shouldn't be just a plain text without any catchy detail. So think about unique design and unique visualization, which is going to help the reader to remember your motivational letter. So this is something to think about. Okay. And the last thing, as I promised, some tips and tricks to conclude. Um, one thing, especially if you are attaching your motivation letter and you're sending this by email, usually that happens nowadays. Uh, first, of course, make it as a PDF format. Don't don't leave it, uh, let's say, in Microsoft Word or something like that. It must be with the format with, which is not changeable, yes, because you never know um, the reader's, uh, let's say, computer or, or program that he or she is using. So make sure that it is PDF, first of all. And also think about the links. What does it mean? The links that you can include. Maybe you don't have your personal website. Maybe you have it and you can mention it. Maybe you have a very informative social media and you can include a link to that as well. And also be careful about that. A person who is going to read your motivational letter and CV knows your name and the surname. Make sure that the information which is reachable on the internet is useful. I mean, if you have something to hide, so hide it. <laughs> uh, People, if especially if they are interested in you as a candidate, they will check about you. They will check what information is available. So if you don't want to show your social media, so make sure that it is not reachable. If you want to show that, you can include the links. The next thing that I mention, mention here, and for me as an English lecturer, that's very important. These are linking words, yes? Make sure that all your motivational letter is linked. 
if you ask me what are those linking words, so these are firstly, secondly, thirdly, furthermore, also in addition, moreover, finally, in conclusion, to summarize and so on and so forth. You can just type linking words in the search engine and you will find the long, long list. So make sure that you are using these because even if you feel that maybe everybody is using, but you also have to use these because the reader, uh, for them, for the readers, it is going to be easier. They will follow your ideas because they know, okay, that's the first, that's the second, that's the third point. It's important. Linking words are important in speaking and these are important in writing as well. And I also wrote one more bullet point linked while proofreading. Proofreading is super important. So when you read it, make sure that your motivational letter is as a story, that there is connection from your introduction to the body and then to the conclusion, that you are not just talking about random facts and that's it. Yes, random facts, as I said already, these are in your CV. Make sure that your motivational letter is an interesting, informative, enthusiastic and motivated story. And one more thing, encourage the meeting or contacting. As I said, a lot of people use I hope, I hope, I hope at the very end. They hope to meet, they hope to, to be uh, here and so on. And then you use this typical construction. I'm looking forward to meeting you soon. or I'm looking forward to hearing from you soon. Yes, that's OK. That's pretty OK. But sometimes you can encourage a meeting yourself, especially when you have these connections and when you are really confident and then you can encourage that you are going to contact the person that you are going to call or that you are going to uh, meet them so soon, let's say, if you have this possibility. So don't be afraid. Uh, again, it depends, but you can think about that. Maybe you can encourage the meeting with a person and the reader is going to think, hmm, this person is confident. Maybe really I should meet him or her. So one more thing that I would like you to vote. More or less, these are all the things that I wanted to say. One more thing that you should vote here in my presentation with the question, what type of motivation do you have? And actually about the types of motivation, I'm waiting and I see beautiful pictures that you get randomly. About the types of motivation, there are plenty of literature on the internet. You can read about that. I encourage you to do that. Let's wait for more players. So the question is going to be, be ready. What type of motivation do you have? I believe that after my presentation, you are motivated even more, that you've got some useful tips and tricks, and you've got some new ideas, and you are more ready to write your perfect motivation letter. Okay, let's start the quiz. Only one question. What type of motivation do you have? It can be competence and learning motivation, attitude motivation, achievement motivation, creative motivation, fair motivation, or even affiliation and social motivation. Think about, I'm giving you some time to think about it. As I said, it's quite important to identify what kind of motivation do you have. Maybe you are afraid of something and that's why you want to step out of your comfort zone, which is also very, very good. Maybe you have a lot of creativity or maybe you want to be a very big part of social community. Deeper about these types of motivation, you can read, as I said, on the Internet, plenty of information there. And I actually included here only six types of motivation, the most common ones. And there are even 11, 11 types of motivation. So before writing a motivation letter, I really advise you to think about what kind of motivation do you have? OK, like 20 more seconds to vote. I wanted to give you enough of the time because I know that things are happening online uh, lively and it's not easy for everybody to connect quickly and to vote. Okay, a few more seconds and let's see. 
Let's see the results. Hmm, interesting. Actually, all the answers are correct. Maybe you've already understood that. Uh, all the answers are absolutely correct. It, it depends on your personality. So we have the majority of those who are who has the motivation of competence and learning. And then in the second place, achievement. That means you want to achieve something. And then in the third place, creative motivation. OK, so I want to say a huge thanks you uh so thank you for listening i believe and i hope i express my hope at this time because i'm not writing a motivational letter at the moment i'm just talking about it so i hope that 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 was useful and beneficial that you've learned something and that you made some good points and it if something was missing in your motivation letter you will come back on it and you will make it perfect so i wish you all the best be passionate love what you do and be motivated and then definitely you will be successful so thanks for joining this webinar about motivation letter uh the recording you will be able to get in a few days there will be a recording of this uh seminar also you will be able to find all my slides online so thank you one more time Enjoy the rest of the day and what is the most important enjoy enjoy writing your motivation letter. Bye-bye.